Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you guys how I did this really beautiful full set of press-ons and I'm really excited to show you guys how I did it, so let's get into it! So I'm going to start off with this little kit from Born Pretty. This has a uh, super top coat, the base coat, and basically um, everything you'll need just to start off. Um, I'm going to be going in with the base coat and I'm going to be base coating all of the nails. And then um, right here I'm just showing you guys the consistency. It looks really, really nice. Um, not too thin, not too thick, just in the middle, which is exactly what I like. Um, I do like my base coats to be a little bit thicker just to add a little bit of structure to the nail. And um, yeah, you guys, so that's what I'm doing there. And then after that, I am going to be going in with my alcohol prep pad and I'm just cleaning off the um, sticky layer from the base coat. Uh, most base coats have this. I think all of them do. So I just always make sure to wipe that off just before um, I apply my color and I'm just doing that very, very good. I'll link these uh, lint free wipes down below and then um, after we're done with that, I'm going to be going in with a color from Raya's Gel Polish. Um, a lot of people don't um, understand like when I say it because I talk so fast, which I totally get. So I'm going to be linking it down below for you guys. It is a small business, so um, it'd be really amazing for you guys to support and just show out for her. I'll just um, link like a bunch of really cute um, colors that I really, really like. So I'm going to be doing two coats of this on every single nail. And you guys, I absolutely love this color. This is one of my favorite nudes. Um, all the nudes that she has on her website are so amazing. If you guys just check them out. I'm actually going to be linking a few of the really pretty ones in the description box. One of my favorites is um, 112 by her, by her gel polish line. But that one's always sold out. But I'll still link it for you guys in case you ever want to come back to it. Because a lot of people can never find it on the website. And then um, after this, I'm just going to be doing the second coat. As you can see, it just really adds a really nice color just to make sure everything's nice and seamless so the look that i was going for for this set um the customer actually asked for something nude and elegant with rhinestones so that's kind of the look i was going for i didn't want it to be too much like in terms of like the bling but i did end up adding like a little bit more than i imagined but i did overall love the look of it and i do feel like they were pretty elegant and beautiful so i did really like that and Right here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to do this design. So I'm going to do the base coat first, and I'm showing you guys what base coat I was going to be using. It's going to be the same one that I used in the beginning, and I'm just going to be placing a layer of this all over the pointer finger. So I didn't want everything to be so, so uniform, so I didn't want everything to be the same. I kind of wanted to try something new. So now I'm going to be going in with a whole bunch of different nudes, and I'm going to be kind of trying to marble them on this nail this is like one of my first times trying this design out so i didn't know if it was going to work or not but as you can see the color is really nicely just kind of um blending together it's kind of separating i think it depends on the type of gel polish you use as well i have tried a different type of marble design that someone had asked for a tutorial i'll insert a pic here and i did the same type of method with the base coat and then applying the color on top let me insert a picture really quick of what i mean so this is the picture. I did the same method and it really gave a beautiful marbled look to the nails. I'll do a tutorial if you guys want me to. Leave a link down, leave a comment down below if you guys would like to see that. But right here at this moment, I love how the nail looked. I don't know why I kept going in with more colors. As you guys can see, it looks so pretty marbled, like kind of like a melted chocolate type of vibe, which is exactly what I was going for. And then I ended up going in with more colors and it just like 
I think, I don't remember, but I think I ended up wiping it. I'm not sure. And I think I ended up restarting because I didn't like the way it was looking. But that's totally my fault. It looked really good right there. But I just wanted a little bit more definition. So as you guys can see here, I do go in with a little bit of a darker color to try and just add a little more swirls and things like that. But I didn't want it to look to so perfect. I literally wanted it to look like if the colors just naturally blended in together. And that's kind of the vibe I was going for. And then it ended up blending too much. So yeah, I think I end up wiping it off. I'm not sure though. So once I saw that the colors were kind of not really working out with that marble vibe I was going for, as you guys can see here, I grabbed some white and dragged it through a bunch of different um, chocolatey brown colors and then I just went ahead and swirled them. I was just want really wanted it to be um, really natural and swirly and just to look really cute. So I did go in with a little bit more base coat so that the colors blend in really well together. And then I'm going to take a little brush, it can be any brush that you have, and then I'm going to pick up some of that gel polish and I'm literally going to kind of try to dab it on there. So I do grab a little lymph-free wipe ready to go with some acetone on it just so that it's ready in case I need to clean my brush off um I use acetone or alcohol it could be either or and then I just go in like I said a little more base coat because that will really help the colors really um spread out and blend almost like a blooming gel I guess you could say I just don't have one of those I've never tried that so right here that's what I'm doing and it's looking really really good it's looking like melted chocolate which is like what I really wanted I seen some nails that were really cute but I don't know if this is the way they did it I'm pretty sure they used blooming gel I really need to get my hands on some if you guys know of a really good blooming gel leave a comment down below let me know what's your guys's favorite and I would love to try it so yeah this is what I'm doing here and then it's just like so so cute you guys can do this with so many different colors for fall maybe like a burnt orange one with like some lighter orange in it that'd be so cute I do have a lot of Halloween tutorials that are going to be coming and fall vibes for sure those are my favorite type of nails to do you guys oh my gosh I'm obsessed with fall nails and yeah so this is what it looked like I really love the outcome I was showing you guys I was very proud of it so then always make sure to clean off your edges especially when you're using a lot of gel polish like I just did here kind of just like slathering it on um, make sure you're cleaning up your edges with your little brush so I did that and then I'm grabbing some gold foil because I'm going to be putting some gold specks on it it's going to look really cute like I said um she did request a elegant nude set with rhinestones she told me she really loved rhinestones so i was kind of keeping that in mind and kind of just going with the vibes and she did want stiletto so that's um what i was doing there And then I did just go in and fix my camera so that you guys can see better. But with that same brush, I'm just going in and applying some gold specks all over the nail. I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to go for. I was just kind of going for it, to be honest, just wherever. And then if you don't like a certain place that you put it, you can always go in with a little bit of acetone and try to clean it off. Most of the time, it'll come off right away. And it won't do anything to the gel polish underneath because the gel polish will already be really nice and cured. So it won't like make it lift or anything. You just don't use too much acetone and you'll be okay okay and yeah that's what I was doing here as you guys can see right there I didn't really like it that much so I went in with some acetone on my brush and tried to clean it off and then I do end up grabbing some bigger pieces and just placing them all over that's like the best thing about nail art like this is that you can be really fun I mean you can have like a lot of fun and you can be kind of like messy with it and it'll still come out cute because there isn't any specific like quote-unquote perfect proper way to do it it's like all about having fun and the less um you try honestly the more beautiful it looks most of the time so that's what i'm doing there 
and then after that I am just going to be going in and top coating it once I like how it looks so right here I realized that I wanted a little bit more gold foil I just really wanted the gold to stand out a little bit more because I'm going to be adding some gold elements into the rhinestone nails and then after that, once I have all the gold foil that I like, I go in with my fingers just to literally smooth it over and make sure that the gold foil isn't lumpy. I hate when the gold foil is lumpy. You can literally just smooth it out and your finger will completely flatten it. That's why I love gold foil. It's so versatile. You can encapsulate it in acrylic. You can use it on gel X and you can use it on press-ons. So um, that's a really good thing, you guys. If any of you guys are nail techs or you guys do gel X, you guys can literally take these press-on designs and incorporate it into your gel X nails. Like I kind of want to start um, titling some of my videos videos like gel x nail designs because when i try to look up gel x nail designs before i swear to you guys there's like only one person that i found in all of youtube that does like really really nice detailed um gel x work and shows you how you can like make sets look like acrylic or do different designs because i know with gel x sometimes most of the time people will think that the only thing you can do is like hand painted like i don't know how to explain it like hand painted work like flowers like things like that like swirls or v-tips or french tips but there's so many different designs you guys can do you could even try to encapsulate it and if you do it a certain way it'll really work out so right here you guys i kind of learned my lesson with the first nail i just went in with the base coat only and then went in with this little mixture of colors and it really really worked out because it started spreading immediately like blooming gel and it really worked out so i already started liking how it was looking i was like okay it looks perfect it's spreading just like it was supposed to and right there i was just showing you guys how it's looking i really love it and yeah you guys so that's what it looks like it looks really really pretty and as you can see like look at it right now you can see that there's a little bit of chunkiness going on on the sides you don't want to leave your nails like that you guys the key to like a really gorgeous um press on shape is to make sure that you're getting your brush at the end of your gel polish application and cleaning up the sides sometimes i even will go in with my finger like it's up to you whatever you want to do and um using the brush will really help just like i'm doing there so i'm using the brush to just clean off all the gel from the sides so that the gel um doesn't make the nail look bulky that's a question i get asked a lot is why don't my nails look bulky and this is the reason why you always want to make sure you're cleaning up cleaning up your side walls literally the same thing like if you were using acrylic so i think that's how i kind of learned that because i did acrylic before i started doing press-ons so now I'm just going in with my top coat again, a second layer just to make sure everything's nice and secured. And I'm top coating this nail again. And it looks so, so gorgeous. As you can see, so beautiful, really, really unique and beautiful. Literally, if you guys wanted to, you can just use this as an accent nail on like a ring finger or something. If you have someone that wants something more simple, um, incorporating this with any color into a freestyle set. If someone tells you they want to freestyle, you can definitely do this. And um, I promise you, most people will literally love this design. So right here, you guys, um, this is the other hand. And I, I love, love, love the way that the gold foil was placed on this one. Like I said, it's random every time, which was, which is what makes it all so unique. Like, I love when two hands are they have their own little touches and like the gold foil isn't placed in the same spots and things like that this is like really 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 beautiful this is what i love so much about nail art is that you can just have fun and just really do whatever feels right in your heart and just have really um an open mind and a lot of creativity when you're doing it and literally the sets where you don't like think too hard about it are the sets that literally come out the best so in my opinion that's like what always happens with me and yeah you guys i just wanted to tell you this set was like so intricate that it literally took almost two hours to do a lot of people sometimes will ask me like how long i take on my sets and it's literally always almost like an hour between an hour and three hours and if it's really hand painted um most likely three hours it just depends like it depends on like how the shaping is and like everything like that if i need to shape a little extra then i'll do it I make sure not to cut corners when I'm making my sets. I always try to give it my all. And right here, what I'm going to be doing for the next portion is I didn't know like exactly what I wanted to do. This was a freestyle. So I'm literally just taking out a whole bunch of gems. Um, You guys can't really see it, but you'll see like me putting gems on the table. So 
I just wanted to tell you guys like what I used to apply them. I'm going to be using my McCart rhinestone glue gel. It's like a little tube one. You guys, it's honestly the best. Like in this video, you can see on my left hand, I have like a butterfly like glued onto my nail. I used the McCart to glue that on and it hit like three weeks and three days today. And that butterfly was still stuck on there, you guys. I barely took my nails off today and literally, oh my gosh, it was like insane. The butterfly was so stuck on there because of that glue gel and what i love about it is that it literally cures under the lamp so you have time to move it around and play around with your gem placement and everything before it dries on you literally my zule bling adhesive was like my pride and joy it was like my ride or die product but the only thing i hated was that by the time i got my gem where i wanted it to be most of the time my glue was already dry and then i had to place more and more and more glue over and over again and sometimes that's just such a hassle and then, I don't know if you guys have experiences with Zule, but sometimes if you use your glue activator, like the spray, too close up, your nail will turn white. Um, my theory is like the spray is kind of spreading the glue all around and then it dries all over the nail and all over the rhinestones, even though you didn't place glue on the rhinestones, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, you always want to spray your glue activator far away when you're using Zule. And always make sure you work super quick when you're using Zule as well. Um, if you're kind of confused on what I'm talking about, I'll link that product down below in case you guys wanted to try it out. But it's literally so good for your rhinestones. But this McCart one is also so amazing because it cures in the lamp and it cures really quick too. And the gems actually stay put. Um, I did want to talk about really quickly about like this product that I got from Enel Couture. It's like the gummy jelly squeeze gel or something like that. Like it comes in the tube. You guys, oh my gosh, that product sucks so bad. Like, I don't know if it's just me. Like, let me know if you guys have ever experienced this. But, like, I tried it out on a set of nails. And literally, while I was filing the nail, the gem, like, flew off. And um, this was with a press-on. So, I did go back in and apply it with the different glue. And just restart the whole thing all over again. But, you guys, don't buy that glue. It's really not good at all. I really didn't like it. And, yeah. So, that's what I wanted to say about that. And you guys, don't be discouraged if you if you have like a glue or like a product that's like um, not really that great, like something that doesn't work, that wouldn't work on like a client. You guys can definitely use it to like practice or something. Um, if you make YouTube tutorials, use it in your tutorials on practice sets or things like that. You could even literally um, still use that glue, but make sure you give your nails or your gems a glue bath afterwards and it'll work. Um, the gems will last because they'll be kind of like suctioned in if that makes sense so you can try something like that as well so i am actually going to be giving these nails a glue bath as well in this video so you'll see how i do that um but right here i was kind of just doing a cluster nail so when i do a cluster nail i know i said i was going to do a full in-depth tutorial of a few different designs i am still going to do that video this isn't that video but i'm i just like wanted to show it because i did end up doing a cluster here so the best thing about a cluster nail is you can literally use pointed back rhinestones, you can use flat backs, you can use charms, whatever you want. Right here I was placing that little gold flower charm in the middle. I also used a bigger um, like round shaped stone as well. And then I'm using a bunch of little caviar beads or pixie beads. I'm not sure what these are called. These are the rose gold ones. You can use rose gold, actual gold ones. They're silver. There's a bunch of different colors. But I love just doing a mix of a bunch of different colors of rhinestones. I was using some... Um, like golden shimmer rhinestones right there as you can see i put one right there and then i'm just using a whole bunch of little things the best thing about the cluster is like you can do whatever you feel would look cute like it's literally a cluster so like it doesn't have any specific rhinestone placement it's literally just a whole bunch of little rhinestones and charms and pebbles and whatever all together in a big little thing you can literally going it like doing it kind of like wrapping around the nail kind of like on an angled um like kind of in an angled motion on the nail you can do it going straight up you can do it covering the entire nail if you really wanted to this one looks like it might be covering the entire nail but it's not it's kind of just like leaning to one side a little bit but um i always end up going so overboard when i do clusters because i just get so excited about them and i want to use so many different gems and stuff so right here i was just using some ss8 some ss10 some ss6 and then a bunch of little tiny uh caviar beads and yeah, you guys, I love caviar beads. That's like my favorite thing to use for rhinestone placement. It really just takes it to a next level. So I am going to be just doing that. And then I'm also doing it on this hand as well. I kind of skipped a part, but in this one, on this hand, I just switched it. So I put the flower on the bottom and this big crystal on the top. 
and yeah i really really love how it's looking to kind of secure your pointed back stones you want to place a bunch of little smaller rhinestones all around the outskirts of it just to make sure that it's really secured in there and then you want to grab more gel and place it all around as well so just to make sure it's really nice and suctioned in and you don't have any issues with your gems falling off so yeah, you guys, for the cluster, I'm just going in with an SSA, a bunch of stuff like that. Um, when I do my in-depth, like how to do cluster nail des uh, design tutorial, I'm going to do cluster nails. I'm also going to show you guys a bunch of different rhinestone placement ideas. And I'm going to be doing it in real time so that in real time, I'm literally showing you guys like, okay, now I'm going to grab my SS8 rhinestones and I'm going to be putting it here. So you guys can kind of see like what's um what's like going on in my head like what my thought process is while i'm doing it i'm going to do it really in depth and it's going to be in real time so it's not going to be a voiceover because the only thing that i don't like about voiceovers is like sometimes i forget like what i'm using exactly in that moment because i voice over it later once the um nails are already finished you know so i do love doing real time videos but i've said before if you guys are new it's just because um my ac in my room is kind of loud so i always have to make sure that either when I'm doing a real time my AC is off and like the room is hella hot and then like my products are like kind of uh watery and stuff because of the temperature in the room but then um if I do a voiceover I can have my AC on so it just kind of like depends you know so yeah that's what I'm doing here and I'm just making sure to fill in any cute any little gaps with these cute little pixie beads and I really love them and then after that, I'm going to make sure that it goes in the lamps and cures. And when you're using big stones like this, I actually like to turn the nails all around and make sure they're curing from all sides. And that's what it looks like. It's so beautiful, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. You can see the gold little flower in the middle. I love, love, love little charms like this. They're so unique, so gorgeous, and I love using them. And yeah, so that's what that looks like. And then I am going in to be, I am going to be doing a glue bath. Um, the way I do a glue bath is you can take any brush on nail glue you can even use like regular kds nail glue as well like in the tube i just like the brush on one because i feel like i can get more precise and it doesn't just go all over the place so what i'm doing is i'm giving them a glue bath by just gluing all around and letting them kind of quote unquote like sit in the bath if you like if you can imagine that so um the glue will dry all around and kind of suction them in there and if you know like nail glue is pretty strong so it works really good and you can also use your hurry up nail glue dryer or your Mia Secret resin activator to um, make your brush on glue dry faster. So in case you didn't know that, it's a little tip and trick as well. Sometimes like if you have a nail tip and it won't glue on, you can literally use your uh, spray adhesive and it'll dry faster as well with any type of nail glue that doesn't go on the lamp. So yeah, you guys, I hope that's a good little tip for you. And then um, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just going to be grabbing the other nail and then actually what i like to do with like i let the um like activator sit on the nails for a while and i spray it from a far distance away because i just really like to make sure that it has time to dry up really really good before i even go in and wipe it and um go in and top coat or anything so right here i'm just going in with the lint free wipe and i'm wiping it with some alcohol and just making sure all of it's nice and shiny and looks so beautiful and then once they're all nice and cleaned up, I let the alcohol dry off a little bit for a few seconds. And then I always like to make sure and go in with my top coat around the stone. So I do get a lot of people always asking me like, do you top coat on top of your rhinestones? And no, you guys, I don't top coat on top of them. Sometimes if you have really tiny stones, like I had told someone an SS6 size rhinestone and smaller, you can literally top coat on top. And it's not a big deal because you're not going to be able to notice that much anyway. Like as you can see here, I don't really care if it gets on those small rhinestones on the outskirts because you can barely even tell the difference i always like to top coat on top of my alloy nail charms or like the ones that are made out of metal just because sometimes they can rust and things like that if you're washing your hands a lot using hand sanitizer the things that we're doing um so i always like to make sure that i just go in and top coat that so that it's nice and protected as well and yeah so i did just run uh, top coat around them but you never want to use a top coat on a big rhinestone or something where it can be really noticeable because it will definitely alter the shine of your nails. So you just want to make sure you don't, you don't do that. So this is what it looks like. It looks so, so gorgeous. I'm so obsessed. I really, really loved this set. Like I said, it took me a long time because I think I was being very creative while I was doing it. I was like in my element. I was like, okay, I really want to make this set really beautiful and unique. Um, personally, I've never really seen a set like this. So I really loved that about this. 
and then yeah so i'm doing a glue bath on the other nail as well just as you can see here it's like closer zoomed in so you can really see i literally just go around the stones like whatever stones are there i just go all around them and you can do this with charms with stones with whatever um even if you do those big huge kawaii nail char nail kawaii nail charms um like those resin ones you can definitely do a glue bath on those as well all around the base of it and they'll literally stay on forever you guys So right here, um, this part did get cut off a little bit and I couldn't really um, insert the part where the I was applying these gems. But I'm just showing you guys here some rhinestone placement for these. So I'm grabbing another one of those gold flowers, some gold rhinestones and stuff like that. And I'm placing them all over the nail. And I just really, really love the way this is looking. It looks really, really beautiful. And I love the vibes, just the placement, everything like that. And I did place some little rose gold caviar beads all around the flower as well just to add more detail. If you want to elevate your rhinestone placement, literally adding the little beads will make the biggest difference because your rhinestone placement will look so bomb. It'll literally look so, so detailed when all you're doing is placing some little um, beads on there. So I really love doing that and I am also going to be giving those nails a glue bath as well. And then for the other nails, I'm just doing something kind of simple. I'm just going in and placing a few little gems on these. Not too much, just a little bit. And you guys don't mind my weird kind of ring combo. I literally just wanted to put on the ring that I got from um, Julia. I, I put it in like a video a while back, but I just like put both my rings together. I didn't really care how it looks. I think it looks cute. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm doing there. And then once all my gems are nice and secured, I am going ahead and I'm just doing um my top coat all around the nails i'm just making sure to go all around the rhinestones and kind of just shrink ramping them in there so this will make your rhinestones really secure because you already applied like the main glue to apply them and then you're going to do a glue bath around them and then you're going to do um the top coat after that so i really recommend using that method if you're having trouble with your rhinestone staying i feel like it'll just really really work and um especially if you're using like the zule glue or the mccart one Either one of those will definitely make your gems last forever. So I highly recommend that. And yeah, you guys, so that's what the nails are looking like. So that's really it for this video, you guys. Unfortunately, I didn't get the part where I was actually putting them into the little box. But if you want to know what kind of boxes I use, I'll go ahead and link them in the description box below for you guys. And I will be linking um, my most used colors in this video and everything like that. Basically everything you need. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comment section. And don't forget to leave a like if you like the video. This was the final result, you guys. They look so, so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. And I just really, really love the outcome of everything and how everything turned out. They're so beautiful. I definitely love these. These are definitely a set I would do on myself because of the style. They're just um, something I would really love. So yeah, you guys, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Bye and have a great day.